Greetings friends. It's that time of year again, spring cleaning time. And for those of us who live kind of a homesteading, off-grid-ish type lifestyle, one of the things that we have to deal with that's slightly different from those who live in the city limits is managing our waste and our trash. So right now, we're loading up some scrap metal. And right here we have a washer. We also have a dryer. Actually, this is a dryer. We also have a washer that we're gonna be taking for scrap metal. We can't, we don't have the luxury of just sitting it outside beside the road and calling somebody to come pick it up. When you live out where we live, you gotta take care of the trash and things like this yourself. This one's been out here a little bit longer than I would like for it to be. And while it was sitting, just I decided to try to start disassembling it. Here's what it is. <laughs> Wash machines are always a little heavier than the dryer. Gives it a little bit more. All right. Try to use leverage as best we can in the legs. Hey guys, we got some more scrap metal around here. We're gonna go ahead and load up. So if you can help me load it up in there. You got one glove. Where's the other glove at? <laughs> hey, what on man? He's the one end man. Alright. There you go. Yep. Just gonna start putting stuff right in there. This will fit on the other side. Load it up. When we first started our homesteading journey, we needed to do a number of different things just to find the goal. And one of those things was scrap metal. We were looking for scrap metal all over the place just to collect and, and turn it in and in, in exchange for financial resources funds. So when you take scrap metal, like your old washers and dryers and just various things, you can take them to the scrap yard and they'll actually give you money for it. And it was a huge blessing for us just to give us extra funds to, to do what we were trying to do of living this way of life. So you just gotta be resourceful and do what you have to do sometimes. Even when we lived in the city, <laughs> we, kind of, we were doing some work in our house and we looked under the house and there were some extra just copper pipes right under there. And that was a huge blessing too because copper was going for a good amount. So those pipes weren't in use and you just gotten stuck under there and left there. So we took them out and turned them in for cash. Trash for cash. Let's have a little bit of rubber on it, but they'll be able to get what they need off of it. With your work site being where you live, another challenge that we have is there's always projects going on among where we live. So managing just the waste and excess can be interesting. So one of the things we try to do is make piles of just the, the scraps Right here we have scrap wood from the chick shawl that I remodeled here. We'll reuse that. But we also have just scrap metal, scrap. This is extra fencing that got damaged. So um, we kind of just stack it and store it and then to get ready to move it on like we are today, we're moving it on. There's a time to keep and there's a time to throw away. Please yes, these remember that. So today we're doing some throwing away. The wood will be, some of it will be to keep for another time, but scrap metal is going away today. All right guys, I think we've loaded everything that we're gonna load for this trip. We still got more, so I think we're gonna have to make another trip, but who's ready to go to the scrap yard? <laughs> they love going to the scrap yard, and uh, you'll see why. All right. 
I'm not sure if you guys ever been to a scrapyard. I still kind of vaguely remember the first time I went. When I was actually an adult, I never went as a kid. And it's like, <laughs> why didn't I ever go here once I went? Because it's pretty cool. And uh, seeing all the machines, but here we go. So we arrived at our favorite local scrapyard, Foils. And one of the first things that you do when you come to a scrapyard is you get weighed with the scrap metal that you have on hand. Next, after getting weighed, you take your scrap metal to whatever pile they want you to go to and unload. And this is the kid's favorite part and mine too because we get to see all these various types of heavy machines moving around the scrap metal. And one of the machines that we call the grabber, or I also like to call it the claw, it picked up that washing machine and just tossed it in the air like it was nothing. Whoa, you just tossed it, that was cool. And today we actually took two loads to the scrapyard, but on their second trip, the grabber took this glob of metal that Micah said looked like seaweed and just used it like a mop or a brush to brush and sweep the scrap metal into the large pile that they were working on. Another piece of equipment that we really like there is this giant magnet. And I think they have a couple of them and they use it in just neat scene. They hover that magnet right over the metal, sometimes over a truck or over a trailer, and then just use it to pick up the scrap metal. It's just like, boom. And it's like it's so neat to see all this. You know how much it weighs from when you have to load it onto the truck, but then seeing them just pick it up with ease, it's like, whoosh, it's like Magneto, just picking it up and just putting it wherever they want to put it. It's just it's so neat. And then after you unload all your scrap metal to the grabber or the big Magneto thing, you head back to the scale and you get weighed. And they weighed, they take the difference between what you brought in what your weight was when you came in versus your weight when you came back from dumping your load and they factor that in to what they're going to pay you for the scrap metal because that number represents the scrap metal that you actually bring. After you get weighed, next I headed into the office and that's where they pay you for the scrap metal. It had been some time since we were at the scrap yard last, but we really enjoy going to foils and, and seeing all the metal <laughs> get moved around. It's, it really is a really neat sight. It is. But, it's uh, really fun to see them like toss stuff. It sure is. And man, I wish I would have saw, I would have loved seeing that as a kid too. It was just really neat. <laughs> and speaking about being a kid, uh, there's been a huge adjustment from just managing the waste that we have here on the homestead versus how I used to grow up as a city boy. We would just have whatever our trash, whatever we didn't need, whatever we wanted to get rid of, rid of we would just put it by the curb as a lot of people do, whether it be leaves or grass clippings, we would just bag it up, put it in the side of the road. Somebody would come pick it up or trash, have somebody that would come recycling. pick up our trash, recycling, even appliances. If we didn't need it, we just put it by the road. Somebody would get it. Have no idea exactly where the things went, but we didn't have to deal with it. And uh, that's the case for a lot of people. However, when you live on a homestead, you live in a rural area, you live off grid, uh, you don't necessarily have those luxuries. And uh, to some degree, that those luxuries aren't necessarily sustainable when you really boil it down and kind of analyze it. No. But it has been a challenge over the seven years that we've been homesteading, adjusting to, to managing our waste and, and things that we have to deal with. And we're trying to make uh, necessary changes to, to, be, to live a more sustainable life. Uh, some of the things that we do are we buy in bulk to reduce packaging. You buy a lot yeah. of items in bulk. Yeah, I buy in bulk. Um, we also will reuse some containers if we can. Uh, we'll also um, separate our recycling out. We compost what we can. And all of those cut down on, uh, on the bulk of the trash. Yeah, we reuse, reuse a lot of glass containers and mm -hmm. uh, really trying to get away from plastic in general. It is a really, really hard thing to do just because we've grown up using plastic all of our lives, but it's really not good for you. Uh, it contains hormone disruptors in yeah. them and infertility things that we just really want to get away yeah. from. Yeah. And uh, we use a lot of glass and trying to use more and more of that as well as we use metal as well. We have these metal cups that you got to really like. Yeah. 
uh, as well as um, we try not to use you know bottled water if we can avoid it mm -hmm. um, you know take water with us in I've taken mason jars like everywhere I go I feel like I have a mason <laughs> jar with me and that was just you know easy and I think it's something everybody can do you can have a bottle um, to take with you for the just in case moments that's right and uh, the way we live especially probably the past 75 to 100 years is so unusual to the way that people have lived throughout history yeah. it is just crazy and and the lifestyles that we have developed and that we live just aren't aren't sustainable aren't in unison with the natural world around us and and uh, we're reaping a lot of consequences because of that even food scraps there's places that they have food what do they call it compost service where they come yeah. pick up your compost in these trucks and they just truck driving around picking up everybody's everything and one of the things that we do as you mentioned earlier is we we take our food scraps and we compost and we either turn it directly into soil to put in the garden or we take it and feed it to our animals our chickens and and things like that but, the way that they used to do it but there's also even if you live in an apartment i have seen like apartment composters where you can you know even out on your balcony or even underneath your sink they have what you can use that it won't be smelly and you can compost stuff and use it for your house plants i mean there's so many different ways you don't have to have a bunch of property we didn't have a bunch of property in the city and we composted a lot of our food scraps so there's there's just so many different ways that you can go about it it doesn't have to be you don't have to own a farm you don't have to own a homestead you can do what you can do where you are that's right and another thing that we do is some of our paper and cardboard pro products as we yeah. burn there's a lot of home standard standards will burn things and even in the past they used to just have they burned a lot of trash I'm That's not what they did with their trash they yeah. burned it but but uh, back then a lot of it was just paper products it wasn't uh, you know anything else and the glass like the glass milk jugs that they used to get you know they used to get returned and then used again or all the soda bottles you could return them in for 15 cents and you could get your money some of your money back that way like i think years ago they were actually better at recycling than we are now because they didn't have plastic and they reused things and uh, instead of using these single-use plastics that we actually can't get away from exactly right exactly right now we do have a dumpster here on our property for for managing our uh, just our general trash that and even that eats at me uh, Josiah is the one that handles our trash he bags it up and takes it out to the dumpster and puts it in and on Tuesday we have a garbage truck that comes and dumps the, the trash but, but that really isn't like our dumpster no that's actually for my dad's business he just lets us you know use that for yeah. our trash yeah. but we only really at the max two just regular kitchen trash bags a week and that's max normally it's only one time a week that we're even having to take out yeah. the trash yeah there's no way that we would fill up that dumpster It'd probably take probably a year or so <laughs> wow. for us to fill up the It'll dumpster with while. with our trash but in general even just the two to three bags that we use a week that even that eats at me because i'm i'm constantly thinking just as i i'm so conscious about seeing i'm just i visually see our trash sitting in a landfill in a hole or somewhere and just not breaking down and that just eats away at me so I want to continue to to see what we can do to minimize and reduce so we're not just consumers because this society just created us to just to be consumers and use and use and use and uh, it's just just not good not sustainable no and, and we really like to just buy things that we need we don't really like to buy stuff just because we want stuff we really try to stay away from that you know I want this because I think it looks cool but will we really use it yeah. that's what I really have to ask myself if I'm gonna make a purchase am I really going to use this yeah and Micah he handles the recycling he takes out the recycling he sorts it he puts the the glass in one container and then he puts the plastics in another and then every now and then we'll go take it to the recycling center together and we'll sort them and put them in the different bins uh, but even that as I've learned more about recycling 
learning that only five to ten percent of what we try to recycle that we put in those bins actually gets recycled and that some of it gets shipped to other countries and it's just sitting there in, in the cities and all these areas and in some places they take it to, in other countries they, they'll take it to other places and they'll burn it and then you get they got kids and people just uh, inhale in that and it's not good so we really need to get away from plastics. It's like we're just making a plastic world and then seeing pictures of these huge plastic islands and plastic floating everywhere, just thinking of plastic. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we need to get away from plastic. <laughs> but uh, managing waste can be, is, uh, an issue and a challenge for a lot of people and as you can see it's an issue for our, our world and it's an issue that you have to deal with as homesteaders figuring out how you're going to manage in that. Well, on top of that the challenge of constant projects going around, uh, going on here makes us have ways to deal yes. with on top of just the trash as well as just figuring out more sustainable ways to handle just the, the waste and things, the byproducts and things that we have is, is a challenge and something you, if you're a homesteader, you're gonna have to deal with. And if you're just living life in general, you have to deal with. The problem is not people. We don't have an overpopulation problem. No. Now we do in the cities, I think people need to spread out and go to some rural areas and spread out. There's plenty of earth to move around and, <laughs> and get out and do things. Our problem, and our problem as a whole, in, in as far as our society and humanity goes, is our our lifestyle and the things that we do. And, and instant gratification. Instant gratification, greed, and things like that. And and we need to get back to living more in harmony with with one another and the world, and using more sustainable yeah. ways. And just like I talked about taking a, a bottle with you, you know, it doesn't take that long to fill up a jar fill up a reusable bottle that you have and take with you. Instead, I'll, I'll be like, oh, I'll just pick up a bottle of water on my way. I'll just yeah. do that. Well, yeah, it might be what, a buck 50 for a bottle of water, but as soon as you drink it, you just throw that bottle away. Yeah. So why not just bring one with you and, uh, you know, cut that out. Yeah. So let us know in the comment section below, what are some of the things that you guys are doing to handle your waste? Uh, do you have somebody that comes by on the side of the road and picks it up for you? But are, are there things that you are trying to do to reduce the waste that you have as far as plastics? Hopefully you're thinking about what you can do as far, all the different ways that you can do that. And let us know if you have suggestions in the comment section below because we're tr still trying to grow and improve in that and examine ourselves and what we can do to better manage our waste. That's right. So let us know. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit. We try to just share here with you. I uh, wasn't necessarily providing you with a bunch of tips, but just sharing how we do and some of the challenges that we have to deal with on the homestead. Sorry for yakking your ear off. Yeah, I'm sorry I forgot it. the preaching again. <laughs> I'll take his soapbox away from him whenever we get off the camera. Well, we'll stop. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys.